good morning everyone. How are you today? Great. I'm in a great mood too. We're going to have a lot to do today. It's going to be a fun day and we're going to go check out a place that uh, unfortunately is no longer there today. Yep. Sadly today's piece of history was demolished a few years ago. But I think it's history is worth telling and worth remembering. So we're going to do that a little later today because I have to go across town to pick up something special that I will show you guys once I get it. But we're going to start out as usual going to the park. This guy below me has been harassing me for about the last two hours. He doesn't seem to realize that if we go to the park a little bit later that there are more dogs there. For some reason if we go at 9 o'clock in the morning there's almost next to no dogs there. But if we go a little bit later there are more dogs and he's been tapping on my shoulder. Literally I'll be sitting in the chair and he'll come up and that clock starts going like that or it's on my ear trying to let me know that he wants to go play because he's used to it. So I've been trying to stall him as long as I can but I think I can't do it any longer. So we're going to take him and uh, yeah, days with Jordan the lion and this little man begins now. There's Marshall High School. The, uh, the field to the left, this football field's where they film the carnival scene from Greece. I know somebody's probably right now thinking, oh, you should vlog that sometime. I actually already did. Hi oh, he's making handsome. friends. Hi there, handsome. See, like I said, we're here too early. There's nobody here. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer. If I had my way, we would have came out here about an hour from now, but I didn't have my way, did I? <laughs> yep, he had to have his way. So the vlog that we're gonna do today is actually one that I've been planning on doing for a couple of months and just kept putting it off and then um, I ordered something like I mentioned earlier that we're gonna go pick up all the way in West LA Which normally you would think wouldn't take that long because it's only like I don't know maybe six seven miles away But it's gonna take about an hour to get there um, just with traffic and the day that we're going and everything but um I figured you know since we're gonna be passing by what I wanted to vlog This is the perfect opportunity to tell you the story today so what we're gonna see is the former location of the Friars Club of Beverly Hills some of your friends are finally here and you don't want to play. Okay, maybe he does now. Now we're getting a little bit of action out here. All right, let's go drop him off. All right, let's get this adventure underway. So actually when I ordered what I ordered that we're going to pick up now, I didn't know it was all the way in West LA. I, I actually thought it was in West Hollywood. I was like, oh, that won't be too bad to go pick that up. But yeah, this can be a major ordeal. It's not really, I'm surprised there's no traffic. 45 minutes later and we have finally made it the seven miles we had to make it. How crazy is that? All right, I'm excited to see how these came out. Well, here's what I ordered. I got some special commemorative postcards made of me meeting Kiss. Yeah, they came out pretty good. So I'm actually gonna sign those postcards and then use those as a Patreon reward. And I think I'm actually starting to lose my voice. I can feel it. So we're gonna go over and uh, check out the old Friars Club now and I'm gonna tell you about it before my voice is completely gone. Look at that church. There's Betty Ford. There it stood, 1961 until well, the club closed itself in 2008, but the building itself was demolished in 2011.
Well, in 1947, a New York historic establishment for the entertainment industry had a sibling open up out here in Los Angeles, then known as the Friars Club of California. In 1961, they built their very first building to house their club, and it was right here where this abandoned parking lot now stands. Now when this club started in 1947, it was started as a nonprofit organization, um, and it was basically started by George Jessel, Milton Berle, uh, Robert Taylor, and a few other people, Jimmy Durante, and they were basically starting this as kind of a private club for people in entertainment, comedians. It was a place that they could go, hang out, not be bothered by anybody. Um, the membership dues that they would pay in, they would actually use those funds towards um, donating towards other charities. And at one time, they were one of the largest contributors to charities there was in Los Angeles. Now, um, they eventually moved like I said, over to where I just showed you in 1961, they built their own building and that became the home of the Friars Club of Los Angeles um, or of California until they had some trouble. Yep, unfortunately the Friars Club that we had out here is no longer in existence. This was a club that had members such as Lucille Ball, Jack Lemon, Tony Curtis, Phil Silvers, Milton Berle, George Burns, Bob Newhart. The list was endless of comedians that hung out here. Even Frank Sinatra used to hang out here. And this was really a special place because like I said, not only was it a place for them to be able to get away and a private place, but comedians are such an odd breed that they need to be around each other, people that have that crazy sense of humor that you can say things that won't be uh, taken offensively by other people that don't get the lifestyle or don't get the humor. And this is where a lot of those roasts originated from. Those famous Dean Martin roasts, they would have a lot of those original roasts at the Friars Club. And um, the Friars Club went on for many years. Like I said, it started in 1947, and then basically the decline of it sounds like it was Basically when the acting president, who was the president from 1991 uh, up until 2004, when he decided to um, resign, they ended up selling the club to a, um, a private business that was gonna make it a for-profit venture. And when this happened, the New York Friars Club stepped in and said that the, the name of the Friars Club and what it was gonna be used for was a violation of copyright. And, um, and that they had the right to use Friars Club. So it went through the courts and, um, and it, was, it was upheld that they could no longer use the name the Friars Club of California. They could no longer be the Friars Club of Beverly Hills. And so then they became just simply known as Club 9900, which was the address here, 9900 South Santa Monica Boulevard. Now, unfortunately, that club, basically months after they lost the name of the Friars Club, it just, um, people quit going and it eventually closed down and the person that owned the property um, just decided to do nothing with it. And in 2011, they bulldozed it to the ground, which is pretty sad because the building itself, the, the architecture of the building was known as being a very futuristic design. It had very minimal windows and still yet let in quite a bit of light. And it was an architectural masterpiece that now no longer stands. There's no longer anything to remember it. There's no plaque, there's no nothing here. And I had heard stories um, as recent as Jeff Ross talking about how he and Bob Saget used to come here with Buddy Hackett. They would sometimes be partying, going to comedy clubs all night. And then when they didn't want the night to end, they would show up and knock on Buddy Hackett's door. And then they would come all together here and party the night away at the Friars Club. Pretty sad to hear. Now, I'll tell you this, what the spirit of the, the Friars Club was, that uh, almost country club for comedians and people in the entertainment industry, that still does kind of exist here in Los Angeles. I would tell you it really only exists though at the comedy store. That place is much more than just a comedy club. It is really a hangout for people in the entertainment industry and comedians to just kind of have a playground 
to do and try different things, which is primarily what this club was for, just to basically come tie one on, hang out with people that were like-minded, and have no shame and no remorse in what you did while you were here. Now it's a parking lot, that's what they eventually turned it into, and as you've been seeing, even, even at this rate, they're getting ready to do something else with it. So, sadly the Friars Club history is long gone. Now I would show you the original location of it, the 1947 meeting place, but there's a lot of discrepancy online as to where exactly that was. What I could find was that it started at the old Savoy Hotel, but I was finding on various websites three different places where it was said to have happened. One, one place said that that was downtown, one place said that it was where the Lux Hotel is now on, uh, on Sunset Boulevard, and then uh, one other place was telling me that it was over where the Home Depot is on Sunset Boulevard. So I didn't want to take you to any place I couldn't find specifically, and I just knew that this was the the formal home of the Friars Club. The building was built for them, and um, there's photos of them doing the ground laying ceremony with Tony Curtis shoving a shovel into the ground. Is no more. Now some of the notable Friars Club members that you could have seen if you were ever able or lucky enough to ever be able to come in here were people like Dick Cavett, Jack Benny, George Burns, Frank Sinatra, uh, the Marx Brothers, Jerry Lewis, Judy Garland, Bob Hope, Al Jolson, um, I mean, like I said, Phil Silvers, the list goes on and on. Just a few years after moving everything over to this space, they had to add an ethics policy into being a member because they had found out there was a massive gin rummy um, gambling ring that was going on here that was bilking people of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, so crazy history. Well, check this out. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Beverly Hills actually is not only allowing this graffiti and not removing it, but they've put a piece of plexiglass over top of it so that it can't be ruined or vandalized in the future. All right, I just got home and had my package from Amazon. The guitar cable that I had at my house kept shorting out, and I have the really good monster, like $50 cables, but they're at Michael's place up in Topanga, so I just ordered a new cable and it showed up, so now I can play my guitar without it shorting out left and right every time I go for a solo. And what the heck was going on here while I was gone, dare I ask? What was going on here? You know, Buddy Hackett was one time asked about the Friars Club, and they said, who was the funniest man you ever saw perform at the Friars Club? And Buddy said, I am. I'm the funniest man that ever performed at the Friars Club. One night. And one night, Red Buttons was the funniest man that ever performed at the Friars Club. And one night, Billy Crystal. And one night, Phil Silvers. He said... That was a place that one night anybody could be the funniest person you ever saw in your life. And so I mentioned while we were out there that the comedy store, in my opinion, is the continuation of the Friars Club. That's a place that comedians can go, they can be themselves, they can say what they want, do what they want, be who they are, let people see who they are, and it's just a general comfort. I spent eight years hanging out there and through that time I got to see somebody who I would say many nights was the funniest person I ever saw. About an hour ago I found out that he killed himself today. So rest in peace Brody Stevens. Push and believe, enjoy it, I hope you find happiness in the other side. Good night, and rest in peace, Brody.